In the forgotten corners of the Hittite pantheon, a rebellion festered, darker than the obsidian quarries of Mount Hassan Dag, Kumabi, a deposed god consumed by an insatiable hunger for revenge, yearned to topple the tyrannical reign of the storm god Teshub. Mere brute force wouldn't suffice. He needed a champion, a weapon forged not just from steel, but from the very essence of spite itself. His gaze fell upon a colossal, sentient boulder, a creature of pure, unyielding diorite that had stood sentinel since the dawn of time. With a forbidden ritual that twisted the very fabric of reality, Kumabi intertwined his essence with the rock, birthing a monstrosity beyond comprehension Alikami. The earth trembled at the fledgling being's first cry, a guttural groan that echoed through forgotten canyons and sent shivers down the spines of even the most jaded deities. To shield his creation from Teshub's watchful eye, Kumabi cradled Alakumi on the slumbering form of Upeluri, the god of dreams. Upeluri, a gentle giant perpetually lost in idyllic meadows, dreamt of tranquil fields and babbling brooks, blissfully unaware of the nightmare growing upon his shoulder. With each passing day, Olakumi swelled, his form expanding by an acre with every sunrise. The very essence of the mountain seeped into his being, solidifying his dark purpose. Fifteen sunrises bled into twilight. Then, on the cusp of the new moon, a tremor ripped through the earth that made even the most stoic mountains whimper. The sea surged, its usually placid surface churning into a monstrous maelstrom as if a colossal hand churned its depths, from the frothing waves rose Ulakumi, his obsidian form dwarfing the tallest peaks. His head brushed the underbelly of the heavens, casting a monstrous shadow that swallowed entire cities in its inky maw. Panic, a serpent with fangs of pure terror, coiled around the hearts of the gods. Rays of light, usually life-giving, speared through the darkness, carrying news of the abomination to Teshub. The storm god, ever proud and ever wrathful, roared a challenge that echoed across the celestial plains. The very air crackled with anticipation as Teshub descended upon Mount Ingara, the chosen battleground, his mighty chariot pulled by snorting, fire-breathing bulls. The clash was a symphony of destruction that would make bards weep for eternity. Teshub unleashed his thunderous fury, lightning lashing the obsidian skin of Olikumi. But the monstrous being stood firm, impervious to the storm's fury. Each blow only seemed to embolden the creature, its roars shaking the very foundations of the mountain. Days bled into nights, the colossal forms locked in a brutal stalemate, neither gaining the upper hand. Then, with a roar that tore the clouds asunder, Ulakumi flung, he flung himself from the mountain, his immense form crashing into the temple of Hebat, the goddess of fertility. Her sacred haven crumbled beneath his obsidian bulk, a chilling symbol of the devastation he could wreak. A tremor of despair ran through the pantheon. If he could so easily dismantle the home of a goddess, what hope did they have against his relentless onslaught? Desperation, a wildfire consuming all reason, clawed at the hearts of the gods. A desperate council was convened in the celestial halls. Seventy deities, a pantheon united in fear, vowed to stop the monstrosity. With a war cry that shook the heavens, they charged down the slopes of Mount Imgara, a tide of divine might crashing against Alikumi. The earth groaned under the weight of the clash. Mountains split open like ripe pomegranates, rivers ran dry, and the sky itself threatened to tear open, spewing celestial fire. But even with the combined might of the gods, Alikumi remained unyielding. The very ground beneath their feet crumbled, sending both gods and monstrosity tumbling down the mountainside into the churning sea below. An agonizing silence descended. Had the gods been swallowed by the merciless waves? Had Olakumi risen from the depths victorious? The answer came in the form of a colossal ripple, a wave that threatened to tear the world in two. From the frothing depths, Olakumi emerged, his obsidian form now towering a staggering 31,000 miles. His shadow blotted out the sun, plunging the world into an eternal twilight. But just as despair threatened to consume the remaining gods, a spark of hope flickered, faint but persistent. Ea, the wise god of the sky, rose from the turmoil. In his hand, he held a relic of creation itself, a copper knife, the very blade that had severed the heavens from the earth and birthed existence. With a swift, 
decisive stroke that echoed through the desolate world, EA severed Olicum Cummy's obsidian legs, sending the monstrosity crashing back into the sea. A cry of defiance, a monstrous bellow that shook the very foundations of the world, erupted from the depths. Though I fall, the world will know my wrath, Olicummy roared, the sound a chilling promise that hung heavy in the air, like a funeral shroud. The remaining gods, battered and bruised, watched with bated breath as the waves settled. Had they truly won? Or was this merely a reprieve, a pause before the inevitable storm? Days bled into weeks, weeks into months. The sun, hesitant at first, peeked through the cracks in the remaining darkness, casting a wan light upon a world forever changed. Teshub, his pride wounded yet his spirit unbroken, emerged as the unlikely leader. The storm god, once known for his impetuousness, now understood the true cost of unchecked power. He rallied the remaining deities, uniting them under a single banner to rebuild the shattered world and prevent Alakumi's return. The task was monumental. Mountains were reshaped, rivers redirected, and shattered cities painstakingly restored. Yet, a shadow of unease lingered. Whispers of Alakumi's return echoed through the Pantheon, a constant reminder of their precarious victory. Years turned into decades, and then centuries. Slowly, the world healed. Flowers bloomed in the cracks of broken mountains, and laughter once again filled the streets of rebuilt cities. However, the gods never truly relaxed their vigilance. Watchtowers were erected on the highest peaks, constantly scanning the horizon for any sign of the obsidian giant. Priests performed daily rituals, pleading with the earth goddess to keep Olakumi imprisoned. One day, a young shepherd tending his flock on a remote mountaintop claimed to have seen a faint tremor in the distance, followed by a low, guttural groan that sent shivers down his spine. His report sent a ripple of fear through the pantheon. Could it be? Could Olakumi be stirring once more? Teshub, his weathered face etched with the weight of ages, addressed the assembled gods. Their once vibrant forms now bore the scars of countless battles. We cannot afford to be complacent, he rumbled, his voice heavy with authority. We must prepare for the possibility of his return. We must be stronger, more united than ever before. And so, the gods trained. They honed their skills, forged new alliances, and prepared for the day they might face Alakumi again. The tale of the monstrous being became a cautionary myth, passed down through generations, a constant reminder of the delicate balance of power and the threat that lurked just beneath the surface of their seemingly peaceful world. The fate of Alakumi remains shrouded in mystery. Did he eventually escape his watery prison? Or is he forever trapped, a monstrous echo in the depths of the sea? The unanswered question hangs heavy, a reminder that some secrets are best left buried and some battles are never truly won. The shadow of Alakumi may have lifted, but the fear it instilled remains, a constant vigil in the hearts of the Hittite people.